Hello everybody and welcome back to lesson 5 of our development instructor series. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to explain a little bit the concepts of checkmate and draws. Okay, if you don't know what checkmate is yet then uh, yeah I guess that's a slight problem isn't it? So what we've done so far is obviously I've just showed you how to begin a game with decent decent play in the opening. I've showed you a little bit of basic tactics and just just some idea of why the center is important and etc. So now we're going to show you how to finish a game. Okay, checkmate, um, as the word suggests, obviously in involves check. Okay, in order to finish a game, you are supposed to checkmate your opponent's king. How do you do that? You would have to put him in check and it needs to then be impossible for him to escape the check and or checks. Okay, so as an example, as you can see on the board here, uh, if it is white to play, white can play here. Why? Because his bishop is protecting his queen and in this case the king now cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot go here obviously and he cannot, cannot take the queen. Okay, if he were to take the queen, then he would lose his king to the bishop. Okay, if he were to go here, obviously the queen would just be able to take it. And of course he can't move on top of his own pieces, so he's completely stuck. Okay, so this queen ends up covering all of these squares, as you can see. Okay, so this is what a checkmate would look like. Uh, we're gonna have a quick couple uh, just positions for you guys just to show a few different types of checkmates You know, you know, obviously all the pieces on the board can checkmate except for the king Because two kings cannot check each other. They can never stand next to each other for that matter So let's have a quick look at the next puzzle So here it would be white to move uh, If it was black to move, there's also a checkmate. So let's say white made a stupid move like this Okay, then black could go checkmate here. Once again, as you can see, the rook is defending the queen. Okay, and the king has no squares to run to. Trapped again, are we? So this is a very, very basic recurring occurrence. Uh, so here, if it was white to play, of course, white would do somewhat the same. Just play queen takes h7, and now the king cannot go anywhere because the knight is protecting the queen. Okay, next one, see if you guys can find them nice and quick. Okay, here again, same thing, same pattern, except the pawn is protecting us this time. So again, the king has nowhere to go to, unfortunately for him. Next one, see now we have a little bit more interesting things. Now we can quickly see here that this pawn protects this square. Okay, so if we want to see which squares are already gone for the king, then we can see all of those three squares are impossible for the king to go to. So all we need to do now is put him in check and obviously cover the rest of his squares which would be this one, this one and this one. So after the move rook h3 this rook now covers all of these squares and we know that the pawn covers this square and of course his rook and pawn blocks himself in. So the king once again has absolutely nowhere, oopsie, nowhere to go. Stuck again. Okay. Here's another one. White to play. White can just play rook h8 because the bishop is protecting the rook and once again this king has nowhere to go to. Stuck all the way. Okay. Let's look at another example. Here we have the same idea. We can quickly see that this bishop is cutting through here. We know that he obviously can't move on his own piece squares, on his own pieces, so the only thing left to do is to check him. So after rook g1, the king now has nowhere to go to because the rook is attacking here and this is attacking and of course he can't go on his own pieces. Okay, let's look at a few more options here. Once again here we can see that this pawn is blocking him in. This bishop is protecting this square. So all that's need to be done is to attack him and protect those two squares as well. So after rook h1, now of course we know that he can't go there and he is being attacked and he can't go anywhere. Next option, this one's a little more interesting. The knight protects this square and this square. Let's make them red. The pawn obviously protects that square. So again, all we need to do is protect these squares here. So after rook h1 again, 
The knight covers that, knight covers that, and the rook covers the rest. Next position, same idea here, okay? The king now covers those squares, the knight covers those squares, okay? So just to show you, all of these squares are taken away for the black king. So all that's left is to put him in check. So after rook, g1, now the rook obviously attacks all those squares, so there is nowhere for the king to go to. Okay, all squares are covered. <laughs> There we go. Pretty. Here's one a little bit more fun. Two bishops. Here you can quickly see that this bishop is protecting that square and that square. So all we need to do is protect this square and this square. So after the move, bishop a6, check. It's being attacked. And of course, all these squares are covered now. No way out. Checkmate. Okay. So that was just checkmate. Obviously there are millions of different possible ways to checkmate someone. It can happen at any time, any place on the board, you know, as long as the king is involved and you checkmate, then that's it. That's how you finish a game. How about draws? There are quite a few ways that you can draw a chess game, okay? The first way to draw a chess game is by offering a draw, okay? If I ask you, would you like a draw and you accept, then the game is over, we take a draw. Okay, so that's the easiest way to, to, to get a draw. Of course, most players obviously don't just want to draw out of nothing, so they want to play on. The second most common draw, most likely, is uh, the stalemate, okay? So what is stalemate? If you think of checkmate, it's when you check the king and he cannot move anywhere, so it's the finish of the game. Now, stalemate is the same thing. The word mate obviously implies that the game is over. So, stalemate means that it's not check, but the game is still over because the king has nowhere to go or he doesn't have any other pieces that can move either. So, if we look at the position here, if white were to make the mistake of playing queen g6, now you'll see that there's no check, okay? The queen is not actually attacking the king, okay? The queen is just covering all of these squares around the king, okay? But the king is not in check. He's not being attacked. And the king can't move anywhere now. He cannot legally put himself, obviously, in check. So he has nowhere to go, and he has nothing to move, but he's also not in check. Now this is called stalemate. And stalemate is a draw. So if you do not checkmate your opponent and you stalemate him, then you end up drawing the game, which would be bad luck in this position because, of course, you were winning this. So better move here would have just been to play queen just one square to the right, because now we are covering all these squares, except black has these two squares to move up and down. So let's say place here, now you can just bring in your queen, or your king, nice and easy, until it supports the queen, and now of course the queen does the job of protecting or attacking all of these squares. Checkmate. So be careful of stalemates. Okay. Obviously. Okay, there is, let me just see what other position I have here. Okay, so this was a, a position for, for white, and this will also show you another way you can draw. So this is the third way you can draw. If it is white to play here, if white plays here, then again, the king is not in check. Okay, this pawn covers these squares, and the king covers these squares. So this king cannot go here, 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 or here. But again, he's not in check. So this would be stalemate. The other option for white would be to move his king away. So let's say he moves his king here. Now after king takes the pawn, neither player has any mating material. Okay, so this draw is just called insufficient mating material. So draw by insufficient mating material. Uh, even if white had a bishop here or a knight here, he still would not be able to checkmate the black king. Okay, so there's quite a few options where you have insufficient material to checkmate with. So that is the third way. The fourth and last option, way of drawing, if you look at this position here, black is threatening to go queen here, which would then obviously be checkmate. Okay? Typical checkmate position. White has no way of stopping this from happening. Okay? If he were to move his king, this would still be checkmate. He cannot defend this square, so he cannot stop checkmate. 
Okay. So what White is left with here is obviously either checkmating his opponent first, okay, which unfortunately is not possible either, or what you could do is if you can create the same position on the chessboard three times in a row, then it's also a draw. It's called a draw by repetition, okay? It's also called perpetual check. There's many, many names, okay, but it's the same thing, okay? So here White could go Queen G6 check, okay? Now look at the board right now. This is the first time that this position has occurred, okay? The king only has one square to go to, so the king goes here. Now we take the pawn check, okay? First time this position has occurred now, after taking the pawn. Now the king goes to g8, we go queen check again. Now this is the second time that this position has occurred. King has to go into the corner again, we go check again. Second time this exact position has occurred again. Cool, king goes here, queen goes check again. Third time that this exact position has happened. Actually that's not true. This is only the second time. Why? Because the, there was a pawn on h6, you see. So it has to be the exact same position, okay. So now, let's go back a little. So if you look at this time, the first time after we played here, this is the first time that this position occurs, but there's still a pawn on h6. Okay, so after king here takes check, this is the first time that this occurs. After here, okay, so, so the draw will actually occur on the queen to h6 check variation, because after taking the pawn, this, look at the position right now, Okay, nothing moves except for the queen and the king. So now the king goes back, we go check here. This is not the second time that this position occurs. This is the first time because there was a pawn on h6. So the position is different than it was before. Okay, after the king goes to h8, queen goes to h6 check. This is now the second time that the king has been on h8 with the queen on h6 and everything else still in the same position. And after king g8, queen g6, this is now only the second time that the king is on g8 and the queen is on g, uh, g6 and after king to h8 again we can go queen check again and this would be the third time that this exact position has happened on the board and this would be a draw. Okay, uh, the reason why this would be a draw is because we can just continue on to infinity, okay? Which means you can't win the game because obviously you can't checkmate. The only way to win a game is to checkmate or obviously if your opponent resigns. So we can just keep going for a lifetime so that is why this is a draw. Okay. Interestingly enough, just about uh, three fold repetitions or, you know, creating the same position three times, it could happen. It doesn't have to happen in a row. You know, if, if it wasn't checkmate here, let's say, let's say, let's say after we go king here, let's say I go queen here just, just for stupidity. Uh, sorry. Let's say I go rook here for stupidity. Queen goes here. Rook goes back. Queen goes back and I go check again. Now we have the exact same position except there were some new moves in between. Okay, of course if I move a pawn then the position changes completely. Okay, that's always something to remember about pawns, okay? They can't go back. Okay, so that is what a threefold repetition or a perpetual check. This was obviously a perpetual check where we just went check, 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 check in the same positions over and over again. So that is the ways to draw, okay? You can stalemate your opponent, you can offer a draw, you can get a threefold repetition, or you can have insufficient material to checkmate. In other words, you can't win the game, which means it will be a draw. Okay, now that's it. That's it for this lesson. Um, please leave some comments if you can. Uh, also, just follow me on Twitter. I will be doing some some Twitch stuff soon as well. So please keep an eye out on that, but I will send you guys the links and stuff like that. Thanks for watching until lesson six, which will come out pretty soon.